Gabriel Martinelli's secret new position. Welcome back to your boys channel and welcome back to the latest Arsenal news today. As we shall discuss Mikel Arteta revealing the truth about the future and what is happening with Gabriel Martinelli. As well as that another update has come in on Martin Odegaard's Arsenal future. And what else is happening at this eventful football club? Let's find out in today's video. Yo, 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 what is going on guys, my name is Spouse 14 welcome back to your boy's channel. Quickly before we get into the video, so I'm going to go around there and show the video some love, smash it like, also subscribe to your boy's channel if you are new and let me know your thoughts in the comments, especially on Gabriel Martinelli. And with that being said, here is the latest Arsenal news today, can I get a here we go. The first thing on the agenda today is Gabriel Martinelli and Mikel Arteta. I'm talking Pele's godson, I'm talking R9 second coming, um, all jokes aside, I am talking Gabriel Martinelli. Martinelli. Mikel Arteta on Gabriel Martinelli. If anything, it's my fault. He's done everything perfect. He trains incredibly well every day. His attitude couldn't be better. He's disappointed he's not playing, but he needs to be patient as well. So what exactly is happening with our Brazilian star boy? And why has he not featured a single game since coming off the bench against Benfica in the first leg all those weeks ago? And why has he not started a single game since Manchester United, where he got subbed off at half time? Something's happening here. I think so. Well, Martinelli yesterday posted a video on his Instagram story showing him doing finishing drills in the box, 1v1 drills, and if you look at it closely, this guy is a lethal finisher. Oh, 9 eat your heart out. Uh, but all jokes, I look at him, man. You look at him, the way he's sharp, the way he's finishing him, the way he's training inside the box, that tells me one thing and one thing only. And that is that Arsenal are converting Gabriel Martinelli from what was a left winger, a winger, a right winger, to now a out and out centre forward. Now, of course, we have discussed this on this channel before why I called his back a month ago when I said Mikel Arteta had a secret plan with Gabriel Martinelli and that was to play him down the middle and before you man say Babs why are you getting excited over one little video I am not getting excited over the video it's more what the training drill is and how he is doing it it's one touch finishing it's finishing as a centre forward and it, it reminds me of Arsenal in terms of how we play in general Kieran Tierney is the best example he always crosses it into the box and Lacazette showed against Tottenham while he scored the penalty in terms of finishing in the box this guy can can be pretty horrific sometimes. And so it looks like Mikel Arteta is advising Gabriel Martinelli to train as a centre forward to improve his finish and to become deadly in front of goal and then when the time is right here it's time to summon Pele's godson onto the pitch. And also in terms of the treatment of Mikel Arteta of Gabriel Martinelli, a lot of men have criticised Mikel Arteta saying why have you dropped him you know this is not fair on Gabriel. But one thing I will say and one thing I have seen is this is almost a very similar thing to what Pep Guardiola was doing with Phil Foden and has done where you know he's all always said this guy's available, he's fit, he's ready and he can play but it's my fault for not playing him and I can see the same thing now with Mikel Arteta and Gabriel Martinelli. Now whether this works over the long term we're going to have to wait and see but one more thing that confirms Martinelli as a centre forward is of course the absence of Eddie Nketiah because he has not been in an Arsenal match this squad for a long long time because of course he was Arsenal's backup striker behind Lacazette and Aubameyang but since I told you man about Martinelli and the striker plan that guy has not been in the squad a single time he's not even playing with the under 23. So if you look at all the little things around us, the quotes, the manager quotes, the training videos, the finishing drills, no Nketiah, I think it's put into one thing, and that is Martinelli playing down the middle as a number nine, as a centre forward for an Arsenal football club. But the question for you, man, is very simple. What are your thoughts on it? And do you think Martinelli has what it takes to play down the middle for my beautiful football club? Let me know your thoughts, as always, in the comments below. Moving on, lads, what about Martin Odegaard? Because there yeah, has been some very, very, very interesting developments today and I'll tell you what this has got me excited. According to El Gol Digital, Martin Odegaard has told his agent to start negotiations with Real Madrid in an attempt to make his stay at Arsenal permanent. Well, 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 yesterday I said that Arsenal wanted to keep Odegaard and Madrid were open to selling him and now we're hearing today that Odegaard wants to stay and his agent can start negotiations and has been told to start negotiations with Real Madrid. Odegaard's harmony in the team is tremendous. He has become an axis of career and there is no longer a single ball that travels in attack that does not pass through his feet according to his report so what they're saying is Odegaard has become a very important player for the current Arsenal team and that is not wrong because what Odegaard has become for Arsenal was
was what Arsenal were meant to get with Hussein Awa. If you cast your minds back to the summer, I know it's a long time back, but let's go back in the time machine. And if Arsenal were to have signed Hussein Awa from Leon, it wouldn't have been for the out and out creativity numbers because, to be honest, even Smith Rowe has better creativity numbers than Hussein Awa. Awa would have been brought in to control the tempo of the attack, to control the pace and dictate the play from the attack in third. And it's that David Silva S role that I am starting to see with Martin Odegaard as he is the main guy in Arsenal's attack. He's always getting the ball, he's progressing the ball, he's dropping off deeper, he's making chances, he's even getting goals now. He is our attacking linchpin. And so if reports are true and if he has told his agent, yo my guy, go negotiate for me, I want to stay at Arsenal, then this again is another positive report, a positive step, nothing confirmed, nothing final yet, but I'll tell you what, it is all pointing towards the right direction in my personal opinion. Well, what are your thoughts on Martin Odegaard and would you start him in tomorrow's game against Olympiacos or would you play Smith Rowe down the middle as a 10 instead? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Moving on lads, let's discuss the Arsenal versus Olympiacos team news and predicted lineup. The first thing that we need to discuss is the injury news because apparently my star boy Bakayo Saka isn't feeling well. Make a Teta on Bakayo Saka. He's doing another test, he's felt something muscular but he's been doing much better and evolving well. We will make a decision this afternoon about what we will do. You know what Mikel, us as Arsenal fans will make that decision for you. Let's not play Bakayo Saka. What is the need to risk him? Of course if the scoreline was 2-1, if it was 1-0 then fair enough it's a close game, it's 3-1 and on paper and on paper only we should be through in terms of 3 away goal and starting Saka and not starting Saka should not affect the fact Arsenal should not concede 3 goals at home. Now I'm not saying it's not possible, we are Arsenal Football Club but then again I do not want to see my star boy being risked. I don't want to see any longer term injuries. Let's rest him. We've got Pepe. We've got William as well. We've got Martinelli. We've got Bamiang. We've got enough mandem out there. So listen, Bakayo, you can sit this one out. Go play some FIFA. Play some Call of Duty and have a little bit of time off. And apart from that, Mikko Arteta says on injury doubts, everybody is more or less okay. So listen, this is a Bruno masterclass. The Bruno I'm referring to is not Man United. The Bruno that Arsenal signed in January in terms of our new medic. Because since he has joined Arsenal, now fast forward to March, we don't have a single long term first team injury which listen I'm not trying to jinx it let's touch wood first but I'm just saying that's a massive positive and credit where credit is due and in terms of the lineup itself this is what I'm going to go for Leno in goal Bellerin holding Mori and Tini as the back four Elneny coming in and Partey then you got Odegaard Pepe Aubameyang out wide and Martinelli down the middle now I know there's quite a few controversial things there the first thing I want to discuss is the centre back partnership I think Mori and holding well of course they're not a first team as in Gabriel and Luis they are more than good enough to deal with Olympiacos attack. In terms of the midfield, Xhaka has started so, so many games over the past couple of months, so I'm going to start the Egyptian Palo instead. And in terms of the front four, Nicolas Pepe needs to start, of course. You might not see that pass he played to Lacazette for the penalty against Tottenham. It was world class. That was what I want to see from Nicolas Pepe. So I want to see Pepito start Mikel Arteta. No ifs, no buts, no maybes. And in terms of Gabriel Martinelli and Pierre Mkubane, they can both interchange if they need to, but I really want to see how Martinelli does if he starts down the middle and really see if this training he's been doing comes into process. So what is your own personal predictor lines going into the game, your predictions for the game and most importantly let's take this game very seriously. And as Mikko Arteta says on Olympiacos forward Ala Robbie who scored in the last game, he scored two goals against us, he's created some chances, he's a really clever striker whose movement is really intelligent, we will have to be careful with him again. Yes and yes and yes, that's exactly what I want to hear Mikko Arteta because the last thing I need in my life is for us to somehow throw away the three away goals, a 3-1 lead tomorrow. It's a hard game. We have to respect Olympiacos. They beat us the last two times at the Emirates Stadium. So let's go there. Let's take it seriously and let's secure the dub and to the next round of the Europa League. It sounds simple, but we're Arsenal. We never make things simple. But what are your predictions for the game itself? Let me know your thoughts and let's move on to the next topic. And that is the other Arsenal news today. The first thing that we need to discuss is Mavropanos, who once again is in the positive news. Because as the graphic shows, the who scored Bundesliga team of the week featuring Konstantinos Mavropanos alone at Stuttgart. Again, he's making another team of the week. Another bit of positive news for Mavropanos who keeps doing bits at Stuttgart. And I've always said that I want to see Mavropanos be given a chance at Arsenal, but I'll tell you what, if Arsenal don't think he's good enough or they don't think he is what they need, they can obviously cash him because all he's doing now is increasing his market value at the same time. If he was signed by Stuttgart and Arsenal, you know, to buy him from Stuttgart, a lot of Arsenal fans would be very excited. So you know what? I think we could have a little gem on our cards. 
And on to the final bit of news, my star boys again, they're positive, they're shining bright. Bakayo Saka and Emil smith have been nominated for the Young Player of the Year at London Football Awards. Congratulations to Bakayo Saka and Emil smith -Rowe. My star boys are at it again, not on the pitch, but off the pitch. These men are doing their bits and they're getting nominated for awards now. Not only are they the face of Arsenal, they are becoming the face of London, the city itself. And as the famous quote goes, we are not here to take but we are here to take over. My star boys are here. We have arrived. Then are here. Hopefully, fingers crossed, these men secure a couple of awards, which will be good for their confidence. But with that being said, guys, that is the video there and there. Of course, as always, if you have enjoyed the video, make sure to go down there and show the video some love. Smash your like. Also, do subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, if you would like to follow my social media, the links will be in the description below, and I would appreciate that massively. But with that being said, there is the video, and that is the latest Arsenal news today. I hope you have enjoyed, my beautiful people. And I will see you tomorrow in a massive game in a bit.